What are the three best credit cards you could get as a beginner or startup business? That's what we're gonna explore in this video. Let's dive into it. All right, welcome back my friends to the channel. So I thought what would be fun is to ask the community what are the best or their favorite go-to startup or beginning business credit cards, right? So we're assuming that the business is making no profit. If it was making profit, there's a whole you know other path you could go down. But anyways, uh, we got some feedback and I gotta say, I like this list, so I wanted to share it with you. So let's start at the top. Before thinking about business credit, understand something, that for your first one, two, three, maybe even five years running the business, creditors will mostly be looking at your personal credit. You will have to sign on a dotted line. They're most likely going to ask for your full social security number, which means that you're essentially a PG or personal guarantor for you know these business credit cards, lines of credit, et cetera. Now, as soon as the business starts making money, and we've got bank accounts that are showing this, right? Stripe accounts, PayPal's, whatever, that have a, you know, thousands of dollars coming in every single month as revenue. Then we've got other options that we can start to use fintechs. We can use even some of like NBC, things like that, that will allow you to link up your bank account to kind of prove or provide that the business is making money. Obviously, if it's, you know, years down the road of the business, we've now filed tax returns. And so we've got different options there. SBA becomes an option, key bank, things like that. Two years plus, right? But anyways, let's go all the way back now to the beginning and start to talk about the startup, right? This brand new business that you want to set up. And this is something that I think a lot of people miss because we get so wrapped up into rebuilding a personal credit that by the time it's time to think about business, I, I notice a lot of people skip over this or they've kind of forgotten about it or maybe they're still thinking in their mind they don't qualify for it but let's dive into it. So what are these three cards? These three cards, I think, are a solid baseline. That's why I like this. They're a solid reward structure, they're great ecosystems, and like I said, they're a great foundation or baseline that will allow you to actually go out pull money off of these, use these for business expenses. You'll be, you know, you'll get good rewards. You'll start to build up in these ecosystems, which will allow you to then grow and expand later, which we'll talk about at the end. All right, so let's talk about the first one. That is the Chase Inc. Cash Card. That is the business card. Remember, there's several Inc. cards now. And this is 5% on selected business purchases, 2% on gas and restaurants, and unlimited 1% on everything else. Another kicker being that there's no annual fee. Okay, so right now they're running a 0% APR for 12 months introductory offer, so that is a great card to have, right? Next, or number two, would be the Chase Inc. Unlimited, two Chase cards. And the reason why is because this is unlimited 1.5% on every purchase. And again, there's no annual fee on this card. So those two cards together really start to give you a solid, like I said, foundation in terms of reward structures, right? But it gets even better. Let's pull in Amex into the mix, which I think are probably your best two cards, two ecosystems to build a large amount of your, you know, your focus or your business efforts in is the Chase ecosystem and Amex. They work so good together. And that is why you see so many personal finance channels just talking about Chase and American Express every single freaking day is because they've deserved it, right? They've, um, they've earned this over the years, right? So. We've got two options here. We could do the Blue Business Plus or we could do the uh, Blue Business Cash, either one. Right now with the uh, Blue Business Plus or the BBP, they have 2X on eligible purchases up to 50K per year, 1X on all other purchases, no annual fee. And currently they're offering a 0% for 12 months introductory APR as well. Now, if you don't like the X or reward point structure and you want cash back instead, then you'd go with the blue business cash. So that is basically the same thing that I just covered with the BBP, but with cash back. So it's 2% up to 50,000 per year and then 1% unlimited on everything else, right? No annual fee, it has the same introductory offer, 0% for the next 12 months as well. So those are great. Don't expect that to change. You know, we're in quarter four of 2023. Even into quarter one of next year, I don't expect that a lot of the 0% offers and the subs, I don't really expect them to dramatically change that much. Interest rates are gonna stay about the same, so you can expect pretty similar offers going into next year. Now, let's talk about this optional fourth card, because maybe, maybe you agree with that list, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, right? Because I hear some of you, and you're saying, what about a targeted card towards purchases that the business might have? So this would be things like an Amazon card, we could even pull in Sam's Club, Costco, if 
you know, again, if we're doing like a vending machine business, a Sam's Club business card is oof, so good for that, right? They even sell vending machines through that. Or if we're doing like home improvement stuff, then we could even talk like Home Depot, Lowe's credit cards, right? We could get into that. They've got some great lines of credit, great credit card options on both of those fronts. And again, that would help you if you're into that line of business. So let's cover some. How many do I have here? I've got four here. And hopefully that'll give you a good idea of where you want to go. And then I'm going to even take it a step further beyond that. Okay. So we've got the three big boy cards or the three primary cards. Now let's cover this fourth. First is Amazon Prime Business. I think regardless of what business you're running, there is a very high odds uh, you're going to be purchasing off of Amazon Business. Okay. So you probably should set up a Prime account, a business Prime account, and then we could look at that card. That is uh, an American Express card. So that is the Amex, Amazon Prime Business. And that is 5% cash back or 90 day terms on purchases off amazon.com. But there's a slew of other rewards and benefits that you're gonna have. You're gonna have uh, exclusive discount offers that they roll out every, I don't even know how often this is, but I'm often getting email and I'm seeing like special offers just for Business Prime members. So there's stuff like that that they roll out throughout the year. You're gonna get early access to stuff. And again, like the terms and perks that they throw in are, are quite good, okay? So that to me is worth it. If you're gonna be purchasing in bulk or could off Amazon. Next, Sam's Club. Sam's Club Business MasterCard. So this card is pretty sweet. It's 5% on eligible gas and EV charging. And then that's up to 6K per year. And then after that, it's 1%. On everything else from Sam's Club, it's 3%. So 3% on Sam's Club purchases and online purchases. That's with the Plus membership, which I think runs you $110 a year. And then it's just 1% for club members, which is the cheaper uh, membership structure and dining takeout and then 1% on all other purchases. Solid card, right? Especially if you're gonna be shopping there. Citibank Costco business card. That's another one you could look at if you don't like, like Sam's Club versus Costco. If you're on the Costco side of things, then this is 4% on eligible gas and EV purchases, totaling 7K per year. And then unlimited 3% on restaurants and selected travel, including Costco travel, which, you know, some of these, it might make sense. Sometimes the prices that they're charging you on the, the travel portals is bloated, but you know, looking around nowadays, you know, travel is way more expensive than it's ever been, at least my lifetime. So, you know, the price of uh, flights, the price of hotels has gone up steadily. 2% on all other purchases from Costco and Costco.com and then unlimited 1% on all other purchases. Those are two killer cards, right? And if that fits into what you're doing, great. So now let's look at Lowe's, the, you know, construction renovation side of things, right? If that's your business, which general contractors, construction, specialty stuff, you know, Lowe's sells a lot of stuff. So that might fit a lot of you out there. So this is 5% on all Lowe's purchases, 2% on the rest of Lowe's purchases, and 2% at selected U.S. restaurants, office supply stores, wireless phone services, and 1% cash back on all others. That's those. That's, so that's my optional fourth. Now my optional fifth and sixth, we could start to get into travel-based cards. Travel on two fronts, airline side and the hotel side. So what I would just suggest here is if you do move into those cards, which I think now like our lineup would be, you know, two chase cards and an American Express card. And then we've got maybe one or two catered cards towards our exact business. Now we're looking at, you know, maybe a fifth, sixth or seventh, which is going to be travel the airline side and the hotel side. That's a solid lineup. Like that is all you're going to need. And then that should be plenty. Like not even forget the travel cards, but those first three, four that I mentioned, that should be plenty to get your business up off the ground, get it to profitability. So then we can start to get some FinTech options and, you know, somebody that's going to look at our monthly uh, P&L statements to give us, you know, loans or lines of credit based off of that, then is where we can start to make a big leap forward and um, actually start funding this business and growing, right? And expanding. So anyways, back to travel and uh, airlines, right? There's so many different rewards structures out there. I would just argue that a lot of people are constantly talking about this on social media, which creates like this FOMO effect of like, oh man, maybe I'm screwing up and it's maybe it's not Hilton. Maybe I should go over here and it's Marriott or maybe I should come over here and do this one or it's IHG or, you know, maybe I should get into Wyndham or, you know, Barclays, whatever. Just pick one, pick one airline, pick one hotel, build it out till you hit the max highest status that you possibly can get because we can always do status matching, which is still very successful to this day, regardless of which one you max out. They see value in that. Other companies see value in that and they do match statuses. Now, sometimes you gotta call. Sometimes you gotta jump through some hoops. They might not offer it forever. They might just do it this one time. My point is, is that if you did have to steer away from like, let's say you wanted Hilton and you know American Airlines or Delta or something like that, those are killer brands. So they're gonna have properties all over the world. They're gonna have airlines all over the world at every major hub. So those are great, options to select and then just max that out. And then after that, if you wanted to go and look at, you know, getting into other ecosystems and building out other statuses, you could, but I would just argue that, you know, to get to that first one, 
because there's gonna be so many rewards that we get. We can bring other people, the baggage options that we get at that point, the lounges and just everything involved in that. It's worth just getting one maxed out. Again, to take a step back, look at our lineup. We've got all of our bases covered. That's how we need to be thinking about business startup, the first couple cards that we get with business credit. We need to be going all the way to the top, looking at the very best, which is Chase, because they are the most sensitive towards new accounts over the last 24 months. Start there, and then we get into American Express, and then we could look at Bank of America or Barclays or something like that, right? But we need to start with the biggest ones first, and then by the time we get down to those, filter down, then we've got a lot of our bases covered with our reward structures and you know our usage, because we're gonna have high limits on those cards, right? So anyways, that is what I've got for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your top three business cards that uh, you would go for if you're starting all over again with business and uh, you had you know, no revenue yet? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Watch more videos while you're on the channel. It uh, will help our channel grow and uh, then we can reach more people. That's it, see you in the next one. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet, right there. Okay, bye.